welcome back to Storytime with Miss Gray. Coming to you today outside, enjoying this nice day. I um, want to give a special shout out to all the educators who are truly going above and beyond for our students. And moms and dads that are homeschooling, do your best, take your time. We're all going to get through this together. So today's story is one of my favorites. It's called The Three Little Pigs and the Fox. This story happened a long time ago, way back when the animals could still talk around these parts. Back then, they could say a whole lot more than ba, ba, moo, moo, oink, oink, and stuff like that. They could talk just like human folks. Back then, there was this humongous mama pig. She built herself a house out of rocks in a pretty green holler over Black Mountain Way. Well, as soon as she finished, she moved into her fine rock house with her three piglets. The oldest piglet, Rooter, was a fair size shout. The middle piglet, Oinky, was a real mama's boy. And the baby piglet was a tiny little girl runt named Hamlet. Now, Rooter and Oinky and Hamlet had the finest pig house in the holler. They even had a wallowing hole right in their front yard. But all Rooter and Oinky wanted to do was eat eat, eat. Well, baby Hamlet liked to eat too, but not all the time. Hamlet liked to roll around in the delicious mud in the wallowing hole and look up at the pretty blue sky. She was a right smart piglet with more on her mind than just eating. Well, it wasn't long before Rooter and Oinky got so fat, they just about filled up the whole house. What a squeeze it was to fit everybody in. Finally, it got so tight that Mama Pig spoke to Rooter. Rooter, you're the oldest, and the time's come for you to go out and seek your fortune. Oh, no, Rooter squealed. I'm still a piglet. Look in that mud hole, said Mama Pig. What do you see? Well, Rooter looked in the muddy water. I see a great big fat pig, he said. That fat pig is you, Rooter. The time's come out for you to go out and seek your fortune. Well, Rooter hemmed and hauled and had an extra big helping of his mama's baked beans to settle his nerves, and Oinky had some too just to keep Rooter company. Well, meanwhile, Mama Pig gathered up some hoe cakes and turnips along with some dried beans and corn, and she packed them in a big toe sack for Rooter to take along. Now, son, said Mama Pig, you'll be fine if you remember three things. Who oh, that's a lot to remember, said Rooter. Stop chewing and listen carefully, said Mama Pig, and Rooter gulped. I'm listening. One, you gotta watch out for that mean, tricky old doodle mouth fox. Two, build yourself a safe, strong house out of rocks. And three, come home to see your mama every single Sunday. Well, Mama and Oinky and Baby Hamlet kissed Rooter on his fat, round jaws, and for good luck, they kissed him again on his pink, trembling snout. And then Rooter trotted on down the road, dragging his toe sack behind him. He walked and walked, and what did all that walking do? It made him mighty hungry. Well, he didn't think about any mean, tricky old Julie Mouth Fox. He didn't think about any safe, strong rock house. He didn't think about visiting his mama come Sunday. All he could think about was the food his mama had put into the toe sack. So he set himself down on a rock, and he opened up the sack. Woo! Ho cakes, he squealed, and he started gobbling them up. All of a sudden, Rooter felt a tap on his shoulder. He didn't look around, and he didn't miss a chew. Just between bites, don't bother me. I'm busy eating. But the tapping went on, and soon Rooter swallowed a big old chunk of hoe cake, and he looked around, and there was me, tricky old Julie Mouth Fox, grinning at him. Have some hoe cake, said Rooter real scared. Don't like hoe cake, said the fox. Well, how about some turnips or corn, said Rooter. Don't like none of them, said the fox. Well, what can I offer you? I love barbecue pig, cried the fox. And he grabbed the toe sack and he stuffed Rooter into it. Please don't eat me up, Rooter pleaded. I won't eat you right now, said mean tricky old doodly mouth fox. I'm going to save you for a cold winter's day. Nothing like hot barbecue on a cold winter's day. So he took poor Rooter off to his den and locked him up. Well, Sunday rolled around and all day, Mama Pig and Baby Hammock looked for Rooter to come visit him while Oinky spent the Sabbath eating a double share of Rooter bagels and corn dumplings. But the night came on without Rooter ever showing up. 
A month of Sundays went by, and they didn't see Snout or Tail of Rooter. Meanwhile, Oinky was growing so big, the house was getting crowded again, and they were having a hard time fitting in. Finally, Mama Pig said, Oinky, it's time you set out to seek your fortune. No, Mama Oinky squealed. I'm too little to leave my mama. Look in that mud hole and tell me what you see, said Mama Pig. Oinky looked in the muddy water and he saw how huge he had grown. He knew his mama was right. Oinky didn't say a word, but two big tears rolled down his plump jowls. Mama Pig said, uh-uh, no need for tears, Oinky. All you have to do is remember three things. One, watch out for that mean, tricky old doodly mouth fox. Two, build yourself a safe, strong house out of rocks. And three, come home to see your mama every single Sunday. Mama packed Oinky a toast sack full of his favorite food, rutabagas and corn dumplings, and then Baby Hamlet and Mama Pig kissed Oinky on his fat round jaws, and for good luck, they kissed him again on his pink, trembling snout. Well, Oinky went slowly on down the road till he was out of sight. He walked and walked, and he kept thinking about how much he was going to miss his mama. He felt so sad, he sat down on a rock to have a little nourishment and cheer himself. He didn't think once about the mean fox or building a safe house, although he did long for Sunday to come to visit his mama. Oinky was just easing a tooth into a crusty golden corn dumpling when he felt a tap on the shoulder. He whirled around so fast he dropped the dumpling, and there was mean, tricky old Julie Mouth Fox grinning at him. Would you like some of my dumplings, stammered Oinky, scared to death. Never eat them, said the fox. How about some rutabagas? asked Oinky. Can't stand the smell of them, said the fox. What do you like? asked Oinky. Pork with lima beans, said the fox, and he snatched up the toe sack and he stuffed poor Oinky inside. Please don't eat me, said Oinky. Please, please, please. Oh, shut up, said mean tricky old doodle mouth fox. I'm not going to eat you right now. I'm going to save you for a rainy day. Mm -mm. There's nothing better than pork and beans on a rainy day. So the fox took Oinky to his den and locked him up. Well, Sunday rolled around and Mom and Baby Hamlet got up early and they cooked him a big old mess of collard greens and wild onions. They wanted to have something special in case Rooter and Oinky remembered to come see their mama. But the night came on without either Rooter or Oinky ever showing up. A month of Sundays passed and they didn't see snout or tail of Rooter or Oinky. The leaves turned all red and gold and the nights got real nippy. Baby Hamlet, who didn't look so much like a little run anymore, was getting restless. And one day she spoke to her mama. Mama, it's high time I seek out to seek my fortune. No, no, Mama Pig cried. You're too young to leave your mama. Besides, none of my children ever come back to visit me on Sundays. Now stop your worrying, Mama said Hamlet. I can take care of myself. All I've got to do is remember three things. One, watch out for that mean, tricky old Julie Mouth Fox. Two, build myself a safe, strong house out of rocks. And three, come home and visit my dear sweet mama every Sunday. So Mama Pig packed a toast sack with sweet potato pone, Hamlet's favorite food. She kissed baby Hamlet on her fat, round jaws and for luck, kissed her again on her pink, trembling snout. Hamlet skipped on down the road and she walked and she walked and she looked all around to make sure no mean fox was sneaking up on her. She got tired and she set herself down on a rock to rest. Mmm, I think I'll have me just a nibble on this sweet potato pone, she said. And suddenly, she felt a tap on her shoulder. It was mean, tricky old doodle mouth fox grinning at her. What a surprise, exclaimed Hamlet. She was thinking fast and stalling for time. I've got a big surprise for you, said the fox. Uh-uh, I mentioned surprise first, said Hamlet. This toe sack is full of surprises. The fox reached inside the sack and he pulled out some sweet potato pone. Mmm, he said. Only one thing better. I like better than sweet potato pone. What's that, asked Hamlet. Pork chops to go with it, cried the fox, grabbing for baby Hamlet. But Hamlet was too sharp for him. She slapped that toe sack over the fox and she tied it tight with a hard knot. And then she left that old fox rolling and squirming on the ground inside of the sack. Hamlet skipped on down the road till she found a place with a fine bunch of rocks. She made her safe a she made herself a safe little rock house with a nice fireplace to keep warm by. Well, no sooner had Hamlet settled in that mean, tricky old doodly mouth fox came knocking at a door. P 
Please let me in, little pig, he begged. I'm near freezing to death. Not on the fuzz of your bushy tail will I let you in, said Hamlet. Please have mercy on a poor old fox. My nose is about frozen off. Just open the door a crack to let me warm my nose, he pleaded. Hamlet cracked the door just a little bit, and the fox shoved his nose in this crack. Slam! Hamlet banged the door shut. The fox thought his nose would nearly drop off, it hurt so. But he was thinking what nice pork chops Hamlet would make. My nose is warmer now, he called, but my ears are freezing. Please open the door a little wider so I can warm my ears. Well, Hamlet opened the door a little more, and the fox tried to push all the way in. Slam! Hamlet banged the door shut, pretty near knocking the breath out of mean, tricky old dooly mouth fox. But the fox still had his mind set on those pork chops. Oh, that was much better, little pig, he gasped. Now, if you would open the door a little bit more and let me get my hind feet warmed, I'll be on my way. Well, Hamlet opened the door wide and the fox sprang inside, but that smart little pig was too fast for him. Slam! She shut the door on his tail and stopped him in his tracks. Oh, my tail! Oh, my tail! cried me, tricky old doodle mouth fox. Shut up, said Hamlet. You're making so much racket, I can't even hear what's going on. The fox lowered his voice to a moan. Please, my tail, my tail. Oh, just what I heard, said Hamlet. Dogs barking. Dogs? What kind of dogs, asked the fox. Hunting dogs. I'm sure they're fox hunting dogs from the way they're barking. Please hide me, cried the fox. Don't let the hounds catch me. Well, Hamlet was thinking fast and sharp. I'll hide you if you tell me what you've done with Rooter and Oinky. They're locked up in my den. Please hurry. Those dogs will be here any minute. First, tell me where I can find your den. Well, mean, tricky old doodle mouth fox hated to give that away, but his tail was killing him and the dogs were hot on his trail. It's under the big rusty colored rock over in Rattlesnake Holler, he groaned. Here, jump into this churn, said Hamlet. She pushed the door off mean, tricky old doodle mouth fox's tail and lifted the lid from the big wooden churn and the fox squeezed inside. Hamlet slammed the lid down on the churn and latched it tight. Are the dogs getting closer? The fox mumbled from inside the churn. What dogs? asked baby Hamlet. I don't hear any dogs. Well, the old fox knew he'd been tricked. He gnashed his teeth and rattled and raved and shook the churn, but he couldn't get out. Baby Hamlet rolled the churn down to the creek and right into the water, and downstream it floated like an ark, and that was the last mean, tricky old Julie Mouth Fox was seen around the hollers of Black Mountain. Well, Baby Hamlet hurried on down to Rattlesnake Holler and searched all around till she found the fox den with her brothers, Rooter and Oinky. And it just so happened to be on a Sunday when she found them and set them free. So they all trotted right over to Mama Pig's house, and there was snorting and eating and kissing and eating and wallowing in the mud hole and more eating, the likes of which you've never seen. The end. Thanks, friends. See you next time.